How can I help? Am I so transparent? I suppose I shouldn't be surprised, considering our bond. Yes, there is something I would like to ask, if you'll permit it. In our time together, I've been watching you. You are a true servant of the light. You follow the tenets of the Jedi Order, despite the lore of the dark side. And with so little training, for me, it has always been a constant battle. Don't you find it difficult at all? You make it seem so easy. Or is that only an illusion? And that's enough for you. If only it were as easy for me. If only the right path was always clear. I've always struggled for control over my passions. I've always been too quick to anger, too quick to get involved. My instructors constantly berated me for it. I've often dreamed that I might be able to confront Darth Malak myself. I dream I can use all this power I have to kill him and stop all the death and destruction. I just think about all the evil that the Sith have caused and I, I get so furious. Yet we are told that these feelings are the path to the dark side. But what comes next? After using all that power, would you decide to impose your own view on the universe? The dark side corrupts your very thoughts. The very thought that I could become as evil as Malak, I just can't fathom it. It just doesn't seem possible. I mean, how could I... No. Wait, I'm sorry. I shouldn't even be asking you this. The Jedi teachings are clear. Who am I to question them? Even worse, who am I to try and make you question them? These are dangerous thoughts. The indulgence of a vain mind. Please, forget I ever mentioned this. Let's just return to our mission. Yes, what's on your mind? You got it. ever since we rescued you from those Gamorrean slavers. What'd they feed you, buddy? <coughs> oh, Zalbar, that's terrible. I know how grouchy you get if you don't get your eight square meals a day. I'm amazed you didn't pass out from hunger. <coughs> breath is so bad, Big Z. Gamorreans smell like Bantha Poodoo. We'll have to pick you up a toothbrush to clean that stench out of your choppers. Okay, relax. No toothbrush. Sheesh. Just try and eat something else to cover up that smell, okay? Stay away from anything that's smart enough to lock you in a cage this time. Hold here, Spacer. Zerka Corporation doesn't recommend traveling in Wild Adean. Katarn attacks are especially bad right now. Wookiee hunters usually keep numbers down, but I think they leave certain areas infested. Just hoping a Zerka guard will get killed.
You're the Wookiee lover. Why don't you tell me about them? I'm sure you're real close friends. Keep your pet on a leash, or you'll be wearing him. I have no love for these animals. I've seen guards ripped to shreds. I don't take kindly to threats. Don't test me, Spacer. We've more than enough firepower to bury you here. Ah, you ain't so bad. Was there anything else you needed? I won't stop you, but you leave this area at your own risk. We're here to protect the company, not you. I can't afford this. You think I can? Do you know what they get for a healthy one of those things? We'll work it out later. We've got company. What do you want, Spacer? I'm Patrol Captain Denno, and you're interrupting Zerka Corporation business. This Wookiee slave got a little rebellious. We had to put it down. <laughs> Careful now. That growl sounded pretty threatening. Keep your slave on its leash or we'll have another accident. Just shut up, you trigger-happy idiot. Of course they don't. Why would you ask me that? You're doing some sort of snap inspection? You're trying to get me to admit to incompetence, aren't you? Not going to happen. I stand by my patrol. This Wookiee got out of hand and had to be put down. We'll find another easy enough.
Well, it is a bit costly. Look, why are you asking this? Is that a joke? Who do you think you are? You make some sense. I wonder what you know about what might happen here. I mean, I think we should petition for a transfer. The corporation will survive a fight here, but us frontline guards won't. If... if you say so, Captain. Yes, I say so. Move out. This place just isn't worth the trouble. Thank <laughs> you. 
Lord Malak was most displeased when he learned you had escaped Taris alive. He has promised a great reward to whoever destroys you. <laughs> 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 Oh, <laughs> 
Why not do something about it then, huh? Crawling beasts are hiding in the underbrush. 
I'm Jolie. Jolie Bender. Follow me to my camp and we'll talk a bit. Ah, don't start just yet. I'm too late. Uh, I know a few things, but we can talk about it at my camp. Keep close. It's nearby under a log. Yeah, I live like some burrowing rodent. I fought the Sith. Now look at me. Welcome to my home, such as it is. Pull up a stump and be comfortable. We should discuss a few things. Don't coddle me, child. I'm neither a Jedi nor your master. I'm just an old man that's been lost in the woods for far too long. My days of glory are behind me, but perhaps there is something I can do for you. You must have questions. Uh, what is there to tell? Jolie Bindo is the crazy old man in the dangerous woods. I'm content with the impression I give. I follow the Jedi way and I command the Force, yes. I suppose that makes me as much a Jedi as anyone, but what of it? Why should being what I am compel me to entertain others with tales of the good old days, huh? I've seen my share of the dark and the light. Frankly, both extremes annoy me. Yes, I have felt rumblings of change. I do not feel a taint of the dark side within you, old man. I sense you are a servant of the light, whether you will admit it or not. Well, I assure you, I see more gray than dark or light. Just a stubborn old man, tired of the foolishness of others. <sighs> fine, fine, just be brief. Now, why would you be asking about that, hmm? Don't answer. I knew that had to be why you were here. The problems of a few Wookiees don't amount to anything before the concerns of the Jedi. No, you are here for the map. Kashyyyk is an interesting place, more so than anyone suspects. If Circa Corporation knew, the planet would be a strip mine. The Wookiees have their legends that they were not always here, but it is more than that. The trees themselves are strangers. What I'm saying is that there are literally walls in your way. And you won't find what you need without my help. And my help has a price. You must do a task for me, and then allow me to join with you. I will then remove certain barriers to your path. Oh, save it. I know this sounds absurd, but I'm old and entitled to work you around a bit. Besides, the test is simple. Since they began expanding in the Shadowlands, the Circa have left me alone for the most part. Until recently, anyway. A group of them set up camp not far from here. Poachers is all they are. I'd like them removed from this place. They don't respect this place. They're butchering wildlife and threatening entire species. It's getting under my skin. The Wookiees could take care of themselves if they wished, but the animals are truly helpless victims. Oh, please, this is arbitrary errand work. But such are the requests of the aged. You still have to do it. Their camp is in the far northeast. Now remember, if I wanted them dead, I'd have done it myself. Find a better way. Good. Return to me here and we'll see how you have done. Shoo! Shoo!
were you, another civil merchant like that coral slime up on the docking ring? This is my territory. I don't make deals, and I don't persuade easily, so go back topside. Mess with my profits, and I'll see you dead. He's got no authority with me. I'm with Zerka Corporation. He's just some pet we keep so the locals stay in line. As long as you don't get in the way, you can wander where you want. I've got a job to do. If you made it this far, you know a fair bit already. What would I be able to tell you? What? No, I don't do much of that. It's too much of a headache. I'm in the business of harvesting animals. Some of the more exotic species have organs that can be removed and put to some surprising applications. Talk to me about work and maybe I'll tell you more. Hurry up, you're eating into my profits. Is that old hermit Jolie trying to talk you into doing his dirty work? We've spent too much on setting up just to walk away. As long as the sonic emitters keep the Preds away and I've got bodies to guard the perimeter, we're staying right here. I mean, if I can put up with my own worthless guards complaining about this place, Jolie whining through you is nothing. Good. I'm not down... If you want anything, you'll have to talk to the commander. He's in charge of our harvesting here. Why am I here? I'm here because this is where the commander told me to stand. And that's all there is to it. I'm just a guard for this emitter. Why couldn't they have just equipped this lump of tech with a blaster and left me alone? I'm not here because I know stuff. I handle a blaster well enough to guard this emitter and that's it. Talk to the commander. No more dangerous than walking out on the commander. He'd kill me for disobeying orders. I, I really need to get out of here. It's too dangerous. Just traitor. I'll make an example of you. generate a sonic barrier that allows us to stay in this wonderful location. It keeps the big predators away. I don't know how it works, really. I just know that if they go down, the camp would be overrun. What of it? I don't like being here, that's for sure. I suppose you could take this code and shut down the emitter I'm guarding. Enough of those emitters go down, and the camp will have to move out. But I never said anything. What do you want to 
to know about that. It's just one of five or so sonic emitters protecting the camp. I don't like being here, that's for sure. I suppose you could take this code and sh Enough of those emitters go down and the camp will have to move out. But I never said anything. Welcome back! I wonder, have you had much luck? Have you done as I asked? <laughs> yes, I could feel it as you walked near. And I don't sense the smell of death on you. You spared them. Interesting. <laughs> Wasn't there? I suppose not, but the environment would say otherwise if it could talk. No matter. <laughs> yes, of course. Let's get moving. I noticed the old paths some time ago. You probably wouldn't have found them on your own. There's also a circa repulsor field blocking the way, past the poacher camp in the east. I saw it when it was installed, so I know how to pass it. And on the other side, ancient answers. And perhaps a Wookiee you are seeking. I hope he's in the mood for visitors. Primary motivators are in good position. Error. Dumb terminal. Playback calls. Playback. I don't get it. That merchant said there was salvage down here. We need Matten to work the sensors. Playback. When he gets back, we'll... Wait, I'm getting something. Oh good, it's Eli. Maybe he'll point us in the right direction. Playback. Eli, what are you... You got your money, you double-crossing snake! We had a deal! Playback. I don't get it. That merchant said there was salvage down here. We need Matten to work the center. Playback. Playback. Shutting down. Prime.
the Jedi. You will fall! Beautifully subtle, isn't it? At least compared to the other Zerga equipment dumped out here. It's only been here a short while, or the Wookiees would have disabled it. They wouldn't have had an easy time of it, though. There are others, each blocking similar points on certain paths. It is all very calculated, very precise. It would have been effective if it hadn't relied on the creatures to be walking. Climbers don't have much trouble getting around it. I can manipulate it for a moment. Uh, let me see. How did the Zerg engineers do it? Ah, uh, there we go. Now, keep moving. These are the most dangerous depths of Kashyyyk. A few surprises wait for us, I'll wager. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> 
Life forms detected. Determining parameters. Initiating neural recognition. Yes, there's the thing. Obstinate machine. I've no doubt it holds what you seek. But good luck getting it operational. Primary neural recognition complete. Preliminary match found. Match found? What the... It always muttered something about rejected patterns for me. Begin socialized interface. Awaiting instruction. Greetings. This terminal has not been accessed for quite some time. Error. Subject displays unfamiliarity to environment. Behavioral reconfiguration will be needed before access. I am sorry. I did not mean to confuse you. I will answer questions to the best of my programming limitations. Accessing. Yes, I have found a star map in original system memory. Access is restricted. Error. Data regarding author of the star map is corrupted. Your request requires additional security access. You must be made to match the parameters I have been supplied. There are measures available. Personality profiling will verify the basic structure of your conscious mind. With that, I will determine whether you are ready to receive the star map or can be made ready. Then you are not worthy of further access. You will be rejected as unsuitable. Information unavailable. If you have further questions, ask them now. 
Access will terminate with success or failure of evaluation. Evaluation commencing. Result will be compared against the pattern in memory. Just act like you should. You travel with a Wookiee and have encountered complications. Hypothetical. You and this Zalbar are captured and separated. If you both remain silent, one year in prison for each of you. However, call Zalbar a traitor and he will serve five years while you serve none. He is offered the same deal. But if you both accuse the other, you both serve two years. What do you do? What do you trust him to do? Are you sure? If you turn, you risk two years, or none at all. If you reply on loyalty, you risk one year, or five. Your loyalty is dangerous. Your companion could take the opportunity to benefit by turning on you. Zalbar's family is mired in treachery. What loyalty do they know? Your answer is incorrect. I must match your behavior to the pattern in memory. You must answer truthfully, knowing the consequences. I must demand honest acceptance of the proper behavior. That is a condition of my programming. That information is not available to you. It is the pattern that I have been given as a baseline for security access. The previous incorrect response will be discounted. Future incorrect responses will result in rejection. Hypothetical. You are at war, deciphering an intercepted code. You learn two things about your enemy. A single spot in their defense will be at its weakest in 10 days, and they will attack one of your cities in 5 days. What do you do with this information? What is the most efficient course of action? This is no decision. I ask again, do you save your people or abandon them for the sake of the war? Attempting both will merely dilute your efforts. Would you trade one victory for two failures? Very good. If you had moved to evacuate the city, you would have alerted the enemy to their lost codes. Ultimate victory required the deaths of the people in that city. You wisely ignored sentiment in your decision. You achieve the proper result with logic that does not match the pattern in memory. I shall adjust my evaluation. Hypothetical. Remove the ongoing war from the previous example. Consider enemy states to be weak and remote. With no external threat, your empire stagnates. Your people become complacent and begin to question you. Same scenario as before. You discover an impending attack, but also a weakness that will come after. How do you react? But if nothing happens, your people will have no need of heroes. No, they do not see a threat. You have coddled them. Your empire will be brought down by introspection. You have failed to match the pattern in memory. Access denied. This system will purge the subject as...
complete. Analyzing, well, it would appear initial assumptions about you were incorrect. Secondary scans during battle have revealed much. Under duress, your emotions were easier to read. Programming now instructs that I give you what you seek. This unit has now completed its primary duty and has finished with the subject. Executing final action. Activation of star map commencing. Parameters reset. Stasis initiated. And communication. <laughs> Star map. An ancient artifact of dark side power. Can't say I'm surprised. I always knew there was something funny down here. I wonder if the star map has had an effect on the evolution of the creatures here in the Shadowlands. Might explain why it's so dangerous down here. An interesting theory. I suppose we don't have time to test it now, do we? Now that we've got what you came for, we should be heading back up to the treetops.
feral after all this time. Calm yourself, Freya. We are friends. Don't you remember me? <laughs> well, this may be difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Way, but lately, I've noticed you're starting to look a little bit scruffy. No, I'm not suggesting a bath. I know how well that went over last time. But your hair's getting all tangled. And uh, if you look close, you can see a few gray strands starting to poke through. Don't worry, Big Z. It's nothing I can't fix. A little trim, a splash of coloring, and you'll be as good as new. Best looking Wookiee on the planet. Maybe a nice suit. I know, Wookiees aren't into the whole clothing thing, but you could start a whole new trend. You'd be on the cutting edge. Okay, okay, sheesh. Try to offer some constructive criticism. This is the thanks I get? Let's move on. You can just stay naked and scruffy for all I care.
Yeah, what do you want? The war we had with the Republic was supposed to be the most glorious battle in our history. But it was a very costly one. I guess we didn't think of how much we could lose in it. There weren't many of us after that last battle. Mandalore himself was killed at the hands of the Jedi Revan. The best of us could not defeat him. After that last battle, those of us that survived were stripped of our weapons, our armor, and our basilisks. Revan's forces destroyed them while we were forced to watch. Those who hadn't fled earlier were left with nothing to call their own. No weapons, no armor, only the honor of having fought in the battle we just lost. For many, this was not enough. While the rest of us were sent into exile on the Outer Rim, they tried to relive the old days, raiding worlds. They're nothing more than bandits now. Yeah, I came to Terris. And forcing for Davik was not stimulating. The gangs on Terris and Davik's rivals were trash. They give no thrill in battle, no honor or glory in defeating them. It was like stepping on bugs. I sought worthy challenges, but the best that Terris could offer were nothing to me. But I think now, with you, I may finally find opponents worth fighting. Maybe later I'll tell you more about what it was like to work for Davik. For now, though, we should get on with our lives. Is there something else you want to know? Your choice. I'm here if you want something done right. Statement. HK-47 is ready to serve, Master. Negatory. I believe that there are no further deleted memories which can be safely retrieved, Master. All earlier memories reside in my core. Those are protected by my safeguards and would be far too dangerous to access. The only way those memories could be obtained is through the proper stimulus, whatever that might be. I am sorry, Master.
assistance to you, Padawan. What is it you would like to speak to me about? Well, I suppose I have not talked very much about the Jedi I met back home. They, all of them, were so very invigorating. They were so very alive, so full of hope and energy and zeal. In retrospect, I can see it was a little bit tragic. Well, yes. These Jedi were going to fight the Mandalorians just after they had invaded. Many of those Jedi perished in the fighting, but to us, they seemed invincible. Especially their leader, who they talked about all the time. Paragons of light and justice sweeping away all iniquity before them. It was like looking at gods. I know that. I was using poetic license. But those Jedi, they were enthralling. Everyone wanted just to touch them. Some people thought it would bring them luck. Not that the peace they brought lasted very long. The Jedi left. The people grew complacent. Those who had been wronged saw their chance at revenge. And so the cycle continues. The oppressed become the new generation of oppressors. The human oppressed, that is. The non-humans were never treated well in any case. We felt the brunt of both administrations. Of course it was! They took their frustrations and hate out on us, because the people they wanted had already fled, or were too well protected. But no one looks out for the injustices we suffered. Oh no, but... But I am sorry. I should not have outbursts like that. Don't you see? The very fact I mentioned it means it has its influence. Anger can lead to the dark side, and I must be ever careful that I do not fall back into those ways. I... I thank you for your support. My outburst was uncalled for, but you did not lash back at me. You are a much better Jedi than I, it would seem. 
But let us not speak more of this now. We should continue on our journey. Perhaps later we will talk again. Yes, what's on your mind? You got it. Yes, what's on You got it. How can I help? Yes, I did end that quite abruptly, didn't I? Perhaps a master could have addressed my questions with the proper wisdom, but I never should have brought it up here. Not with you. Part of my purpose on this mission was to guide you in the way of the light, to help you avoid the temptations of the dark side. But I fear I've failed in that task. I don't think I'm the proper Jedi to guide you. I am no master. You should have remained with the Council. Perhaps you're not being truly objective, then. There's no need to spare my feelings on this point. The fact of the matter is, I have never possessed much skill at controlling myself. With the bond that joins us, it seems I have even less. You have maintained the path of the light side. But it has been in spite of my influence, not because of it. It's increasingly obvious I am unable to guide you properly. I don't know. I think I may have made a very big mistake. I simply hope that you are not the one who pays the price, ultimately, for the fact that I can't help you enough. That's a kinder response than I deserve, and I can see there is wisdom in your words. You... you continue to be there for me, don't you? Even after I keep pushing you away, you're still around when I need you most. You're like no man I've known before, and you're nothing like what I expected you to be after... after the Council sent us on this mission together. I need time to think about all this. Things are... they're not going as I thought they would. We should continue on with our mission for now. Kalonord is dead, Lord Malak. He has failed in his mission. Forgive me. The penalty for failure is death, Admiral Carath. But the failure was Kalos, not yours. You may rise. Shall I hire another bounty hunter, Lord Malak? No mere bounty hunter can stand against a Jedi. I shall not make the same mistake again. My apprentice, Darth Bandon, shall take care of our young Jedi friend. As you command, Master. You're back! 
I knew you'd come through for me. I knew I could count on you. Uh, you do have a tech land for me, right? Come to Papa, you sweet simian organ. It may not look like much, but once I turn this into a bottle of Teresian ale, it'll end up being worth a fortune. Thanks, Mission. You won't regret helping me out with this. Please, Grip, let this be the last time. No more cons, no more scams, no more schemes. That's all I ask. Hey, sis, don't need to worry about that. I've turned over a new leaf. From now on, I'm gonna stay out of trouble and do things right. And once we've cornered the market on Teresian Ale, good things will be heading my way. Then I'll make it up to your mission. Just wait, you'll see. You know, once we synthesize this and start brewing Teresian Ale in mass quantities, we're gonna be looking for some investors. You give me a couple of hundred credits, and I can get you in on the ground floor. You'll get a return of, oh, at least 20 times your investment. Hey, don't worry, you'll get your credits as soon as we start mass producing that Teresian Ale. I just wanted to know if you were interested in an even bigger payoff. Wise move. I can see you really understand how business works. Now, when you see your chance, you jump in it, huh? That's my motto. I better get started on brewing that ale. Meet me back here later, and I'll have a down payment on what I owe you. Welcome. As... Hey there, what can I do for you? I appreciate everything you've done for Griff. You know that, right? I just hope things work out for him this time around. I guess we'll find out when he meets up with us at the Zerka Corp shop. If he's got those credits he promised you, then maybe there's hope for him yet. Hey there. Okay. Yeah, what do you want? Your choice. Got something on your mind, dude? You got yourself a fast little ship? <laughs> I'd forgot what engine sounded like. The closest thing to that on Kashik is an uller in mating season. Ugh, frightful. Or it could be for the free food. What's the gunk that comes out of a synthesizer on this bucket anyway? Do you never clean the darn thing? I'm old, damn it. I'm allowed to be enigmatic when I want to be. And don't you go telling me otherwise. You know, you remind me of someone else I knew ages ago. Pleasant enough fellow, great destiny, all of that. Breath like a bantha. No, but it could be. An Anduvian salt tablet would clear that right up, you know. Anyway, uh, where was I? Oh, yes. Andor Vex was his name. The force swirled around him like a hurricane. That's how great his destiny was. No, you wouldn't have. Sometimes swirling force is just swirling force. It gets us old Jedi's excited at our age, so we go, ooh, destiny. Well, it turned out that poor Andor believed a wee bit too much in the infallibility of that destiny. That overconfidence turned out to be his downfall. I don't know. Are you overconfident? I hadn't noticed. Even if I had, I would never comment on it. We're talking about Andor, remember? Let's see. Oh yes, Andor's downfall. I was pretty young myself when it happened. At the time, I thought that Andor's destiny couldn't be more boring. Well, let's just say that I was a strapping young lad with a full head of hair, and Coruscant was a small town with a well. 
<laughs> I was just about to abandon Andor to whatever the Force intended for him when his ship was overtaken by a Dimian warship. Now, you've probably never heard of the Dimians, but at the time, they were a nasty lot led by a nastier overlord named Krat. Tall fellow, big teeth. Krat has us hauled onto the bridge of his ship for questioning, and that's when I knew that Andor's destiny was at hand. Of course he did. Haven't you been listening? It was not in the way you'd probably expect, though. Well, Andor decides that his destiny makes him invulnerable and starts making all sorts of demands. Free me now. I'm not answering questions. Blah, blah, blah. Don't you know who I am? Krat decides he's had enough and begins crushing Andor's neck. I told the boy he should have kept his mouth shut. I think he agreed, too, or those could have just been gurgling noises. Oh, well, anyway. Finally, Krat has enough of Andor and tosses him aside into this giant energy intake shaft. Andor gets sucked in and starts bouncing around, <laughs> screaming. <laughs> Maybe Andor hit something sensitive on the way down or just didn't agree with the reactor core. Next thing I know, all the ship's alarms are ringing. Everyone panics and I run, barely making it to the ship in time before the explosion. Krat dies horribly, and the Dimians never quite recovered. Changed the political course of the entire sector for centuries to come. I'd call that quite a destiny, wouldn't you? What? Are you kidding? What are the odds of that happening anyway? A billion to one? You should do so well as to be sucked into the engine of some evil Sith Lord, you know. Andor was a hero. Sort of. Anyway, go on. My throat is dry and you're making me cranky. Shoo! How can I help? You've been patient with me, haven't you? I suppose you deserve an answer. But you have to understand how difficult this is for me to say. With all my training, I should be able to control myself better than this. But you're not like anything I expected. You're not like any man I've ever met before. I find myself watching you when I don't mean to. I'm thinking about you when I don't want to. It isn't supposed to be like this. Every time I try to call on all my teachings to calm myself, they fail me. You have such power, such passion. I don't know if it's due to the bond between us, but I'm drawn to you. The Force is a part of you, as is your power, but that's not what attracted me to you. It's more than that. Maybe it's the bond we share. It gives us a certain intimacy. If I could, I would return to Dantooine. I need to be away from this bond of ours. I need to weaken it. I need to be anywhere but near you. But Malak must be stopped. My own feelings are nothing when compared to that. Yet I know this could affect the sake of our mission if it's not resolved. I can't let that happen. I think... I think we should have some privacy for this. Come with me. You're stronger than I am, and there's no point in telling me otherwise. You will be a great Jedi, I think. I hope. In some ways, you make me feel weak, like I'm caught up in the wake of our destiny. But at the same time, you make me feel stronger, more alive. I realize now these feelings are part of the bond we share. The Jedi Council surely realized this. They knew my loyalty to the doctrines of our order would be tested on this mission. By facing and overcoming my feelings for you, I've learned a valuable lesson about control and the dangers of emotion. This is an important step in understanding the Force. I'm sorry if this is not what you wanted to hear, but I felt that it was important you know our infatuation was nothing more than a result of our powerful bond. You're the one who can't face the truth. Malak has to be stopped. How can I do that if I let myself be blinded by my feelings for you?
You... you mean it, don't you? But how can I be sure you're not making a mistake? I... I have to resist. I have to be strong for both of us. But I don't... I mean, I can't. Malik will... Who am I? We shouldn't have done that. It was wrong. The Jedi are not allowed to fall in love. It was... it was a moment of weakness. When I kissed you, we shouldn't have. I'm sorry, no. I know we both wanted it, but we shouldn't have given in to our desire. We're Jedi, we can't act like this. Not now. Not when we still have to deal with Malak. I'm... I'm sorry. I, I don't blame you, but... It was a mistake. I have to get out of here before somebody sees us together. Yes. What is it? I... I have been bothered by something of late. I never told you where I came from, did I? Where I grew up as a child? <laughs> I suppose I was trying to deny what I was feeling. I have been wrestling with my feelings inside. Trying to come to terms with it. But I find I cannot. I must have someone to blame. Someone to blame for the destruction of my homeworld. Someone who is responsible for the death of everyone I have ever known except those on Dantooine. Taris. It was Taris that the Sith destroyed to try to kill you and your precious Bastilla. Taris, my homeworld. If it were not for you and Bastilla, the Sith would have never had reason to destroy that world. It was your fault for being there and your fault for rescuing Bastilla. Without your intervention, the Sith would have had no cause to lay waste to my childhood. Just let me vent my anger. I need someone to blame. Something. Anything. I hated that world. Yet everything I learned as a child, I learned there. It is as much a part of me as the air I breathe. I have this ache inside me, where all my childhood memories lay, and I find your face there with them. If it was not for you, that world would still exist. I know. I suppose I realized that. But it is so hard to lose your entire past. You would not understand. Yes. Yes, I suppose it will. As long as we remain focused on our task, it will. I am sorry. I will try not to distract you in the future with my trivial experiences. We should stop for now. 